Okay, now I hopefully can display both the texts at the same time. See below here it says Psalm 1 from the same version, meaning the first book that was printed in the United States was a book of Psalms. In in America it's sometimes called the Bay the 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 Bay book or the Bay, the Psalm Bay book or something like that. You're going to have a link to this actual page in the in the video description and it's showing part of that book because the actual book of course was actually just bought for 14 million dollars in 2013 so we only can see a facsimile of extracts and this particular extract was published um, in the early 18 the early 1900s and you'll be able to download it but I just want you to see, these are the English words, and this is the published year. How did I find this? I found it through this text, right here. See how curious there? That is equivalent to 1640. And every other occurrence of how curious in this text is referring to a Bible text that someone was publishing. Like here... And specifically to the reformers in here every single occurrence of Hokurias from verse 42 where it starts the first time Hokurias is listed in the passage of Matthew 24 every single time you see this the distance between it and the next Hokurias in syllable counts is divisible by seven And each one of these references refers to a reformer. This is Jan Huss using Wycliffe. This is Wingley and Erasmus and Luther. This is John Knox. Oh, and this is our text in front of you. First Bible text printed in the United States. Now, why does that matter? Well, first of all, because I found it by looking at 1640 and I didn't know what 1640 was. See, 1607 means 1637. Exe means present. Christ being present. And here's Hokurias. Three syllables, not four. So it's covering 1610 in the syllable counts to 1612, which is 1640 to 1642. And what's important about 1640? Oh, that's the first time in America that somebody metered the Hebrew, which is unknown to others at that time. The actual style that the Bible uses from Genesis to Revelation to meter its text. But they figured that since the psalm is sung, it must be metered. So what did they do? They went back to the Hebrew and they counted every syllable. And then they tried to make the English words have the same syllable counts. That's what I'm doing here. That's what I've been doing for the last eight years. Now. This is a smoking gun. This is proof that what I'm telling you was something that people knew about, at least with respect to the Psalms, and they tried to translate using the same syllable counts. Now, I don't get the exact same syllable counts they do here in verse 1, but I know how they got these syllable counts because I have the same Hebrew they had. They're counting syllables that I would not count. So they're coming up with a total of 28 syllables here. Notice it's divisible by 7. I came up with 21. Now either they're right in their syllable count or I'm right in mine. But the point is both of them are divisible by 7. The first sevening, this is something they didn't know, is a date line. 
David is telling you when he wrote this text by means of the 70. So now we have to look at, well, what's 28? It's 28 prior to when he writes, and 28 years after he writes are two significant dates. When you figure those out, you know how old David was. He could have been age 28 when he writes it. And he's dating from his own birth because of his future 28 years after he writes. Okay? Now, I'd have to go look up in Bible all the events in David's life to know why 28 is important both before, if it's his birth date, and after. Because then he'd then be 56. And 56 is one of the most important meter numbers in the Bible. Like, Paul uses it, Mary uses it, Psalm 90 uses it, Genesis 1 uses it, Daniel uses it. Well, he uses it kind of funny, funky. He, he adds to, to show that you're late. But the point is that our boy here, okay, is using it right here. See? Ho kurias. It's 1610, which means 1640, which is how I learned to go look up. I started searching, well, what about if the Bible was important in 1640? And what Bibles were published? And then I ran across this thing, which is a list of Bible and parts thereof published from 1505 to 1820. And as you can see, you can download it for free and read it yourself and search it yourself. And if you use Adobe Acrobat's OCR function, you can search it in the PDF. The PDF that you get from Google will not automatically be searchable. You have to use the OCR function in Adobe Acrobat, the full version of Acrobat, not just the reader. And if you use the OCR function, you make the text searchable. It's no longer a graphic. This is a graphic. Okay. But you can search it here. That's what I did. See, page 371 was the first sample from the 1640 edition. He calls it the New England version of the Psalms. It's got other names. Usually called the Bay Psalm Book, and it was purchased. You can search on it in Bay Psalm Book. Uh, let's see. How about I kill this and I make a new window? And I go through my history, and where is it? Basom. Ooh. Show all history. There it is. Basom book in Wikipedia. You can just look this up in Wikipedia. Excellent copies. They call it the Basom book. That's one of its names. But in this catalog, not that one, not that one, right here, it's just called the Psalms New England Version, first edition, Cambridge, that's U.S., Massachusetts, 1640, okay, and that fourth, I think that's, that's telling you what kind of version it was, okay, was that four octavo or something, this is Psalm 19, I counted this. They're using 12 syllables here, and I counted 12 syllables too. In Psalm 19, verse 1. 12 syllables in the Hebrew, it's 12 syllables in the English. This one is 14 syllables. So that would tell you the date of Psalm 19. If 14 syllables is right. I got 12 syllables the second time. So one of us is right. But the point is, they were counting the Hebrew syllables and then making English words to match the same syllable counts. Even if it ended up being a little awkward. You getting the point? So what I'm saying to you, okay, here, was not unknown. It just got discarded. They didn't figure out, well, wait a minute. If the Psalms are counting syllables, then why don't we count syllables for the rest of the Bible? 
and they didn't notice because they didn't count enough or weren't looking for it. Oh, wait a minute. This is 14. Yeah. And the next page, what do you have? Psalm 1, 28, two sets of 14. And nobody noticed how odd that is? How come it keeps coming back to sevens? Yeah, because it's a deliberate style in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But if it fell into disuse, there was a brief fad. And John Knox apparently knew about it too. Because, where is it? Not here. Not here. Here. See? Knox's liturgy. Well, liturgy means that you're going to have a cadence. He made his own translation of the Psalms of David. Uh, how much, I don't know. But see, it says in prose and in meter, spelled in the old, you know, um, Dutch style. With their whole usual tunes, newly corrected and amended. I can't get a copy of Knox's liturgy. It was published in 1615, but Knox died in 1572 or something like that. So, I would really like to know what kind of meter he used. Was he turning it into a scotch rhyme? Or was he too like this guy, this guy, counting the syllables in Hebrew and coming up with syllables in English or scotch? To match. I don't know. But the point is that doing it in meter. If you were to search the this book or this book. Which is this book. The same book here. If you were to search on the word meters. M-E-T-E-R or M-E-E-T-E-R. Or M-E-T-E-R. You will find out that there was something of a fad in the 15 and 1600s for doing this. So here is my objective. The distance between each of these whole choreos is seven syllables. And I made, I made posts on them in Frank Forum, which is right here. Here's a post. And a link to this will be in the video description about the whole choreos being seven, divisible by seven every time it occurs. From the last one. So here's four, verse 45. Here's verse 42. The first time it occurs. You count the syllables from there. To there. And sometimes you have to count it from here. To here. Or from here. To here. Or from here. To here. It's sevens. It's the same style that Paul uses in Ephesians. The seventy the same style that, that you find used for these other things that we did on the Amen Lego Humin, which I haven't fully explained. There's also another clause that starts in Matthew 24, 27. Here we go. See this? Parousia tu huyo tu antropo. That's also the distance every time. And unfortunately, I, I, we already sevened it, but we didn't know it was on purpose. We didn't know it was based on this clause. Every time this clause occurs, or one of its keywords like huyu or parousia, it's sevens. Every time. Are you beginning to understand that there's something going on here on purpose with the syllable counts? I hope so. And I hope you also get out of it that, you know what? They actually knew about this. They actually knew. John Knox knew something about the meter, whether it's the same thing as what I'm saying, I don't know. But honey, you got proof right here. Psalm 1. 14 syllables here, 14 syllables in the second clause. That's a total of 28. And of course, a 14 is already divisible by 7. So when Psalm 1 was written in verse 1, if their syllable counts are right versus mine, then the first 14 is a date line, and then the sum of the two is a second date line. So David is writing 14 years from X and 28 years from Y. And all I have to do is figure out what those are. 
and I, I have a suspicion I know, but I, I first want to compare my syllable counts to theirs because I'm coming up with 21 as the total here. And they're coming up with 28, so I want to see who's right. But do you see that it's deliberate? This is a 14 in their own count. This is 1640. I didn't write this. This is 14 syllables. You can count them yourself in English, and this is 16, 14 syllables. They did that. I didn't even know it existed until today. So when you see this, and you count the syllables here, and you see that there's a seven difference between this and the last time Hokuryas occurs prior. See, this is verse 42. When it first occurs, here's the next time. And then you compare that to the year AD when you add 30 to the count. And, oh, wow, each time it's referring to a reformer who translated the Bible and was using the original languages. And it's about the Reformation. See? And then here's the last time it's used in Matthew 24. And that's referring to this text right here in 1640. Because the meter is part of the interpretation of the text and it was forgotten, provably forgotten, because you're looking at a copy, a reprint of that text in the Baysan book. See, Baysan book. This is the entry in Wikipedia, Baysan book. It was first printed in 1640 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The first book that was printed in North America. And there is a facsimile of its title page. And you come down here and you'll find a facsimile of Psalm 88. But when you go to this other link, that has, it has more Psalms that you can test. So you can count the syllables in English and say, oh wow, they seven. Yeah, see, same pattern. Here in the original Greek, as in the Hebrew, which is the same thing as I found already in Genesis, Isaiah 53, Daniel 9, and Anoninominom um, found it in Zechariah. He's also looking at Malachi. And, of course, in the Psalms. So, when I'm talking to you about this meter, don't think that it's something I'm inventing. And here's your proof that I didn't invent it because somebody else noticed it in 1640 and it's the first printed book in the United States. And before that, John Knox knew about it. But I don't know how he counted the syllables because I can't get a hold of this particular liturgy so I can see, you know, what the text says. You with me on this? You see I'm not making it up? This is the best Christmas present I've ever had. Well, maybe not the best, but very close to it. God caused me to understand how this meter that I'm telling you about works. It caused me to find it in 2008. He caused me to find out how it works at Christmas of 2010. And now I'm finding proof that somebody else knew about it, which is what I've been looking for ever since 2004. And it's staring you in the face. So this is based on something that people have known since John Knox. So why aren't we using it? Well, maybe now people are going to start. Because it's not just brain out talking about it anymore, is it? Peace out. Oh, this is a happy Christmas. Happy Christmas.